My name's Miranda. I've just uh, recently spent some time in another place where there's a lot of emphasis on um, raising the Shakti, mm -hmm. um, so the Kundalini energy from the base, and then um, allowing it to express itself through the body. And uh, I personally have had this started to happen to me years ago, so it's it's very natural for it to to come and express in my sitting meditations. So my question is around surrender to the Shakti and how that develops surrender and a union with the divine, like uh, just encouraging the Shakti to move through the body, like in a sitting meditation, just and then you know going into that center and um, and then the body starts to kind of move. And, and where I was, it was encouraged to keep it going for one reason, to purify the channels. If I continue to go in that direction with movement of surrendering to the Shakti, does that, what does that do? I guess that's my question. When you do any practice, Whichever kind of practice it may be, the aim of which is to awaken Kundalini Ma or to make her move, the fundamental approach there, and I'm saying this in all humility, is wrong. It's just wrong. And the reason is that she is actually awake already. She doesn't need anybody to wake her up. Kundalini Ma is a Shakti, is a force that you are born with. And what is her actual purpose? And this is something you will not find in any book in the world. What I'm telling you now is something which is new, it is a new understanding of what is actually going on. It's a revelation. So Ma is a force that you are born with, that is experienced at the base of the, of the spinal cord. And what the function of Ma is, of Kundalini Shakti, is throughout the life of an individual to release Shakti, force, at any point when the system is undergoing trauma of some kind or the other, that is when she releases and balances out by bringing energy into the system when the system has lost that energy due to a traumatic experience. This experience can be physical trauma, it can be emotional trauma. For example, physical trauma when there's an accident and a person has, the body has been shaken very extremely, that is when this Shakti is released into the system so that it can balance out that loss of energy. Moving on to the emotional, the same thing, when a person is under extreme emotional duress, that is when this Shakti is released to balance out what is required by the system to hold through an emotionally challenging experience. Moving on to the conceptual, that part of you which thinks. It is also that the Kundalini Shakti in those moments when a person is undergoing extreme trauma conceptually, bordering on madness, or when the thinking has lost its, its ability to control itself, that's when the Shakti steps in. Or when a person in a different range of consciousness or, or, or spectrum of consciousness is not able to create, where there is a collapse in the ability to create, that is when she steps in. When there is an inability to be in a unity consciousness with all that is around and with the other, that's when Ma will step in to make things possible for the one that seeks that. Or then, of course, when the third eye opens, that is when she's there energizing the ability to receive and transmit. 
if she is disturbed, if she is prodded and pushed by any kind of practice, whatever it may be, you can awaken Kundalini Ma, but what happens if she starts to do her thing? There are only a few people in this world who can quiet Ma down, because they have to have that kind of clarity in the system and even clarity in the very cellular consciousness to be able to quiet her down. So, if you are in a practice where you are actually making her do things, how would you like it if someone came and started shaking you and making you do things? What would you do? You would revolt, you would... you would first retract and attempt to keep yourself quiet and if they keep on troubling you and prodding you, you're going you're gonna to revolt, you're going to give back. And this is what happens in many cases. Another thing in this context is that when Ma is moving up and down, she's releasing just those bits of energy that are needed so that they can flow up and down through the system. But if you start to disturb her, then she will start releasing because she has to defend herself, because she is not here in order to give you experiences. Her place is to support you through this life. In the context of the soul and in the context of your experience of Self-realization, what part does the Shakti play? So the Shakti is here to support that process. The more you are in surrender, the more the chakras open up, they, they become pliable, one can say, they open up. A chakra does not open up if you simply put your hand on it and release energy, that's not... that may help a little bit, but it's really negligible. What actually opens up the chakras is a continual process of surrender to what? It is the surrender to the soul, to the antaratman. So you're bending, you're circumventing the ego, not even looking at it. You're tuning into your master, and as you bend to the master, to the soul, to its impulse, as you follow its impulse in your actions, these chakras open up. And she flows, she does her thing, you know? If you go into a meditation and then you sort of make her do things, how long do you think this is going to... she's going to be quiet? If the surrender is that deep and that perfect, you may manage to get her to flow and do things to you. But what is your... what are you actually... what are you gaining out of it? If we look at it from a purely utilitarian viewpoint, what are you gaining from your body shaking? What are you gaining from disturbing Ma? when you could actually train yourself to bend down to your master that is with you all the time. That is why here in the Indian subcontinent it is that strict with children that they are made to bend down, touch the feet of your parents, touch the feet of your older sisters, older brothers, your aunts, your uncles, bend, 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 it's always about bending because the one that doesn't bend lives in suffering and forcing Ma to do these things is also a form of imposing the ego on a force that you don't even understand minimally. We cannot imagine this force and how powerful it is. It's a million suns inside the body and to mess around... I mean, would you go and put your finger in the sun? you won't be there anymore, and that's what happens. And then people say, well, then there is no I anymore. 
There may not be an eye, but you'll definitely feel your eye because the body will start to experience pain of a kind which is simply unimaginable. We've had many people coming to the satsangs, their bodies arching back, screaming in pain, screaming. Because they've started these practices innocently. It's like going and switching on the switches in an atomic power station without knowing which one is going to start the meltdown. You know? This is such a big power. What you have experienced is one millionth of what Ma is capable of and also the havoc she's capable of wreaking in the body, the brain, everything. People who have these awakenings, they... it's not even an awakening, it's a forced attack on her. She's tired of this. She's tired of being messed around with by people who have no idea of who she is, what she is, who don't revere her, who have no concept or understanding and then she's just ready to, you know. So, to the second part of your question, it's that innocence which has to now grow into knowledge and these processes have to be allowed to settle down and you tune yourself into the process of surrender to Source. What are the processes that bring us to a realization of this, of, of Self, of what is this whole thing about then, the spiritual path? The answer is actually very simple. It is about being aware that this body is here, giving it a slim identity, a simple identity. Miranda, right, is your name. And what's your mother's name? Gail. So, Miranda, daughter of Gail, and where are you from? Where were you born? Toronto. So, that would be what we are sure of. And we take these three things, Miranda, daughter of Gail from Toronto, and that's enough to know who you are. You ask the question, who am I? I'm Miranda, daughter of Gail from Toronto. That's fine, that's who you are. And with that I that you have now created, you start to bend and surrender to your Master. Why do you think in the Indian subcontinent, since millennia, they have the Guru Shishya Parampara, the Guru Vada, it is not in order to support this idea of domination of a guru over a student, but to prepare the student, the shishya, for the surrender to the, to the actual guru, which is the Antar Guru. And that is where you're bending. That is what you're doing in every moment. You don't have to meditate. Life is a meditation. This moment is your moment of meditation. This moment, here and now, just feel your master. Try to see that all these ideas that you have, all these huge concepts, these yearnings, these longings, these clamorings, these demandings, these insistings, that they are all the ego. And the soul or the source is just there quietly sending you an impulse. Shall I drink this or not? Yes, okay. No, no. Bend down to that and that is the sadhana, that is your meditation. It is the most challenging sadhana you can imagine. Aghora sadhana pales in comparison and Aghora sadhana is a very tough sadhana. Twelve years on the... in a cremation ground, eating human flesh and and, you know, covering yourself with human ash. Not an easy sadhana, facing the ghosts of the night. This sadhana is tougher, because in each moment you are there, vigilant about what is impulsing your actions. And it's also quite interesting, Miranda, that life becomes this joyous, very exciting movie, like 
you're just always watching things going on, you're here and now, you're, you're reacting to, to me, you're, you're aware of me, of this soul. You're aware of your own soul, so you're aware of the soul in the other. If your body is shaking and, and this Shakti is moving inside you, you cannot be aware of anything because you have made her do it. She doesn't need to be awakened because she is awake and she's your... she's the Shakti that supports your Self-realization processes. If you respect her and leave her in peace and tune in to your Master and you'll see very fast because you have that discipline, I can see it. It's here and now, it's the other, it's my soul, it's the soul of the other, you know. And suddenly, the world is... you're in a state of embrace, but with your eyes open. Tuning in to the other, actually expressing compassion. How can you express compassion if you are not here? If your eyes are closed and your body is shaking by a force, you have prodded into action. So it's very beautiful to be able to shift that discipline into an experience of this moment. If you take in what I'm telling you and you actually start to implement this, count yourself fortunate, you're sparing yourself a lot of pain and suffering in this life and physical damage as well. So, what I'm understanding from what you say is the Shakti is in each moment and if I attend the Shakti in each moment, that's all that needs to happen. I don't... yeah, there's no prodding, there's no inviting, there's no... it's just... You don't even have to think about her. She'll think about you. Nice. It's like a child doesn't go and feed its mother. Mm. The mother is feeding the child. Mm. The child doesn't have to search for a breast to feed its mother. It's the mother, she has her breast, she takes the child to her breast and feeds it. That is the... that is the dynamic between you and Ma. That's why she is Kundalini Ma and not Kundalini baby. So you don't have to think about her, she knows what she has to do. You focus on the surrender to the soul, to the master within, to the Antaratman. You can call it truth, you can call it compassion, love, Jesus, you can give it any name you want. Whatever feels comfortable to you culturally, you can give it. Not that is your master, this is your master. If you practice this for a while, you'll be coming here and telling me that this is just incredible, it's, it's, it's massive what's going on with me. You'll feel it very fast because you have that discipline. You have the discipline of tapas, you have the ability to hold through and to really be with it. And then you have... you know, you owe it to the world to do this with tuning in and... people who have this ability to take up that, that tapas and to also do it and to learn about it, to, to deepen their knowledge, they also... It's not then just about you and your own knowledge of Self, but it's also about the other. And what do you transmit to the other then? At the most what can happen if you continue that process is you may have enlightenment and then you sit there under a tree and everybody's looking at you because you're detached from everything and out of a out of a thousand, one becomes a known master and the rest are just fading away and have to be taken care of by their families and society. That's what it is. Enlightened beings, helpless. They've come to me, they say, what after this? I'm enlightened now, now what am I supposed to do with this enlightenment? 
So, you can just let Ma be now, let her be. You don't even have to think of her. Does a small baby think of the mother? It just goes and is there drinking? It's her job to feed the baby, she'll feed you. And there is that much anger with me, with that many people who are practicing Kundalini awakening without a master, without a proper teacher. And even if that master is there, once they are awakened, most of them don't know what to do with her. Then they say, well, you know, you've gone mad, now you leave, we don't know what to do. You didn't surrender, that's why you are like this. You can always blame it on, on the person. Anyone who's grown up in an Abrahamic tradition, whose genes contain that tradition and who haven't transformed that in their own genetic makeup are even more endangered because they don't have the concept of... They haven't actually inherited that concept, they may have learnt it and transformed themselves, but those are rare. That concept of surrender to the soul, it is always a surrender outward. Also because at the initial stages of the awakening, there is a experience of power in the system. The person feels powerful and that power is something which is the ego at play. It's like to, to put it simply, if the awareness is out of the system which gets pushed out by these by these movements and these forces at play, what takes over the system is the ego. Because there's no connect anymore with the actual truth within, with the, with the boss of the system, there's no connect anymore. The system is doing its own thing and so the ego is taking over. She just walked in, that beautiful lady here, she was speaking about her own experiences of anxiety and, uh, and, and she didn't mention the word panic, but extreme anxiety after having spent many years in bhakti, long hours of meditation and mainly bliss-related chanting. And at one point something happened and they asked her to leave the ashram. Why? Because she started doing strange things. Why? Because this awakening is forced through by such actions and then the ego takes over and the person is doing weird things and then no one wants to deal with someone like that. We've seen it in so many ashrams in India, so many. Not just in India also, we've seen it in America, in Europe. Because practices are being undertaken where neither the teacher nor the student has a modicum of an idea of, no? But there is a safe practice, it is entirely safe, it cannot awaken anything which doesn't want to be awakened and that is the practice of tuning into your master, to your soul. Anyone can do this, even without training. The training or what we do is that we actually, you know, start to go for the ego and start to break it down so that the processes are faster and there is even less possibility of tuning away from, because you're under a, a sort of a, you're continuously told where the ego is showing up. So then at one point you're like, okay, so now I know what exactly is what. That's about it. So if you can't make it, you can still do this practice without causing any harm either to your physicality or to your emotionality or to your conceptual being. So just that simple practice is already a step. Let it flow, let it be, be in this moment, tune inward to the Master, 